Hello and welcome to another video about modeling with FreeCAD. In this video we will doing a model of an electronic enclosure for an Arduino board, like it is shown here on the screen. This video is not based on the normal tutorial series, it is based on a forum discussion on the FreeCAD website, where a user posted a link to a YouTube video showing uh, how to model an electronic enclosure for an Arduino Uno board using Autodesk Fusion 360 software. And the user was wondering what workflow could be best used in FreeCAD to get the same model. The version of FreeCAD I'm using here is the 0.16 stable release on a Windows 7 64-bit system. My navigation style within FreeCAD is set to Blender mode and I found out that I could speed up my personal workflow by creating this custom toolbar here. And this custom toolbar consists of uh, several macros and several already um, present commands within FreeCAD. So the first thing I did was to start recording a macro and then switching to, for example, the part design workbench or the sketcher workbench. And then I stopped recording the macro and then I used uh, the command tools customize going to the section about the macros and then I assigned um, icons and uh, tooltips and keyboard shortcuts to those macros which allow me to switch to the appropriate workbench in this case for example the sketcher workbench with one click instead of going to the pull down menu and uh, choosing the sketcher workbench and so on. As I said, I also assigned uh, keyboard shortcuts because I'm someone who is used um, to use keyboard shortcuts. I also used the tools customize command to have a toolbar which is when you scroll up, the first entry, which is global, meaning that it will show up in every workbench. And here I added all those uh, recorded macros, in my case uh, four macros, allowing me to switch to a sketcher workbench, the part workbench, the part design workbench and the draft workbench. From the FreeCAD website, I also installed the macro force recompute because I found out I needed that quite often in uh, my daily life with uh, modeling FreeCAD and I also um, added the entries found in the part workbench for measuring linear dimensions for measuring angular um, dimensions and to clear those measurements. I also added the macro from the FreeCAD website how to measure circles, but I have to admit uh, when I'm working with FreeCAD I often use other uh, methods to measure circles when I have a 3D model and I want to know what uh, diameter a special circle has. Rest of the macros is more uh, to, to try some things and uh, it is not relevant for this video. So for getting a reference 3D CAD model I went in the internet to the site of GrabCAD um, that is the URL grabcat.com and within the community I did a search in the library 
for an Arduino model. And I ended up with this model. It is called Arduino Uno Reference Design by Jorge Alberto Silva and you have a possibility to download an STL or in my case a STEP file. Since we are talking about CAD data uh, I prefer a STEP file over an STL file. In order for downloading files you need to register for free with GrabCAD. So I downloaded this file and if you open it in FreeCAD it has a size of uh, 8.3 megabyte. It will take some time to load and in the end you will be presented with this result. So the next thing I did was to toggle the axis cross to get an idea where the origin and the orient uh, of a part is and um, about the orientation of the part. So this is not to my liking. So I selected all of these parts and then I'm applying a placement and I'm choosing the incremental placement and I want to rotate around the z-axis by 90 degrees. I click on apply, wait a few seconds in order to apply the change here so um, when this is resetted to zero the change is applied as you can see here and then I choose rotate around the y-axis and I will have a rotation of 90 degrees and I'm choosing apply and here the change is applied. So the next step would be that I don't like the origin to be here. I like the origin to be in the middle of the board. So I'm selecting this face here. I also select this face here. As you can see both faces are selected. And I'm doing a measurement and the measurement ends up with 53,34 millimeters as the width of the board. So I'm choosing again all parts. I apply I will apply an incremental change and in this case I want to move all the parts in positive X direction. So I'm choosing 53,34 divided by 2. We click on apply, choose OK, and here we go. So I'm deleting now this measurement and um, I'm repeating everything with the Y direction. So I will mark these two faces, click on measure 68,58 So I will choose all the parts, apply an incremental change and in Y direction of 68,58 divided by 2. And the change should not be in positive Y direction. So here we go, we will have a negative value. We click on apply, we click on OK, we delete the measurement, 
and we toggle the axis cross back, change to axisymmetric view, fit all, and now we can save this file here and use as a reference. Now we need to have the coordinates of the four holes here on the board for later being able to model our pins which should hold the board in place. In order to do that my favorite method is to use the draft workbench. So I will switch to the draft workbench. I will enable the perpendicular snap and the center snap and I will draw a line from the center of this half circle perpendicular to this edge. I will select the line here. I also could have selected the line in the tree view and then in the data tab where is shown the length of this line. So to say the y coordinate of this hole is 13,97 millimeters. The same we will do when trying to get the x coordinate. So I'm selecting the just drawn line here. As you can see, I made another line here. And the length is now 2,54 millimeter. So this will get us the coordinates of all four holes in respect to this point here being the origin for the measurements. This will get us mainly the same coordinates as used in the reference video. So this is the result with all draft lines drawn in order to determine all lengths of the lines by just selecting them and reading out the length in the data tab. Now since we want to also know the position and size of these connectors and these connectors. We will use here a different method for measuring. So we will switch to the part workbench. We will insert a cube and as you may already know the cube is inserted at the origin. So this point here, this lower point of the edge is located at the origin. So I can select the faces here and get my measurements done. This is how to determine the dimensions of the Arduino board which we will need to get our 3D model. So let's get started with modeling the Arduino case. We will switch to a part design workbench, we will create a new document and we will insert a sketch on the XY plane. So the first thing we'll do is to draw our rectangle. We do a right click to uh, end the command of a rectangle. We will select these two points and the vertical axis and apply symmetry. We will select these two points and the horizontal axis and apply symmetry as well. We select this line here and apply a horizontal dimension of 53,34 millimeters. And we select this line here and apply a vertical dimension of 68,58 millimeters. Now we have to draw all four circles, so I'm choosing circle, 
I will begin in the lower right corner and I will draw counterclockwise. I do a right click to end the circle command and uh, then I will select all four circles and if I select now the radius constraint this question pops up, pops up uh, asking me do you want to share the same radius for all selected elements? Yes I want. So equality is applied as constraint to all four circles and the same radius. The radius is uh, 1,4 millimeters. Okay, so now we need the coordinate of all those four circles. So I select these two points and select a horizontal constraint of 2,54 millimeters. Now I will also add a vertical dimensional constraint of 13,97 millimeters. I will repeat this one here being 7,62 millimeters and I will show this dimension to be 66 comma zero four millimeters. So the next thing is to apply here a dimension of thirty five comma five six millimeters a vertical dimension to be applied here is 66,04 millimeters. It's the same dimension as this circle here. Whoops. Let's get first dimension also a little bit away to make everything uh, look a little bit neater. Okay. And so we want to add here a dimension of 50,8 millimeters and a vertical coordinate of 15,24 millimeters. So since we want to use this sketch as reference sketch, we have to name all those constraints. So I'm doing a double click on this constraint here and as name I use a capital X. Here I will use a capital Y. Here I will use a capital X and a 1. And here I will use a capital Y and a 1. Here this is X2. This is Y2, so this one is X3, this one here is Y3, this one is X4, and this one is Y4. Here we go. We can close the sketch, and we are ready to model the case. So we want the XY plane to be the floor and uh, to be let's say the ground plane on the inside of our lower uh, cover part. So we insert another sketch on the XY plane. We draw a rectangle, do a right click to end the rectangle command we choose this fillet command to apply fillet on every one of the four corners. We do a right click, we select then these four arcs and apply equality and the radius of 3 mm to all of those arcs. 
we then select these two points and the vertical axis to symmetry. Then we select these two points and the horizontal axis and to symmetry again. So now we choose these two points and apply a horizontal dimensional constraint. So now we want to have a reference to our base sketch. So we do a click on this light blue mathematical symbol here and we will get this input field here. So what is our reference we want to use? The reference is in sketch. So we will insert here shift s for getting a capital S and now everything is displayed which can be used beginning with a capital S. So we click on sketch and we want to use one of the named constraints. So now we insert shift C so a capital C and yes we can con use constraints X to be our destination. So the result at the moment would be 53,34 mm. But we want to have an offset of 1 mm and a wall thickness of 1,6 mm. We want to model from the outside in. So the outside dimension of our wall will be uh, this x dimension here plus 2 times offset so plus 2 millimeters and plus 2 times wall thickness so plus 3,2 result is 58,54 millimeter this is also an indication that we will get a valid result click on OK and now this mathematical symbol here turns dark blue and the dimension itself turns light grey. So it is not edit editable anymore directly. And if we hover over that field, we will be shown what relationship we just defined. We click on OK and we will repeat the action with this constraint here. We do click on this light blue mathematical symbol here. We want to refer to sketch. We want to refer to shift C, a capital C, in this case to constraints Y. And we will also add two times offset and two times wall thickness. So plus 2 and plus 3,2. We click on OK, on OK. And here we are. We have made our offset. We are symmetric. Our sketch is fully constrained. We close our sketch. We do our padding. And in this case we choose two dimensions. And the uh, inner compartment should have a total 8 of 22 millimeters. So at a positive 8 of 11 millimeters. There is the splitting of our case. So the first length should be 11 millimeters and the second length should be 1,6 millimeter, which is the thickness of uh, our cover here. So to say of the base of our cover. We click on OK. And now we want to apply wall thickness. So we select this top face here. We switch to the part workbench. And we will apply thickness by using this utility here. And we want to apply a negative value to uh, have a wall going in direction of the inside. So minus 1,6 millimeters. The mode we will leave the skin, the 
join type arc, no intersection and self intersection, no faces selected, uh, everything left to default. We click on OK, and here we are. So the next step would be the padding of these pins. So for doing the sketch for these pins, we will select our reference sketch. We'll, we'll do, choose Edit Duplicate Selection. We will click in empty space to deselect everything and we will select this face here. We will change back to part design and we will choose map a sketch to a face and we will choose sketch 002 to be mapped to this face. So now we will choose and uh, we will select these four lines and we will toggle them to construction mode so that they would not be used for the upcoming uh, pad operation. So the next thing is we want to link to our reference sketch again because if we uh, choose some dimensions for example of the case or uh, the position of the pins we want to uh, have our model in this way that we only uh, have to edit the basic reference sketch and everything else will adapt. So we do a double click here and we choose here capital S from sketch shift C constraints X here we go. Now here we will apply Shift S, Shift C, Constraints Y, OK. Now here we will choose Sketch, Shift C, Constraints X1, OK. Now here we will apply Shift C, so Sketch, Constraints Y1, OK. Now this is from sketch, from constraints, X2, OK. So here we will refer to sketch, constraints, Y2, OK. Here we will refer to sketch, Constraints X3. Here we will refer to Sketch Constraints Y3. OK. And one more Sketch Constraints X4. And here we will refer to sketch constraints y4 here we go so now we are ready to do our padding so we will select our sketch apply our pad with an height of 15 millimeters you choose ok so the next thing is that we want to do another pad operation to have uh, the board at a distance from the ground floor because of uh, soldering and uh, remnants uh, which are left on the backside of the board after all necessary electronic hardware wiring and so on is done. And so we select this face here, we apply our sketch, we will choose to take external geometry. So we will start here and we will just take over all those four circles. 
we do a right click to end our command and when we will choose the circle command we will hover here to show in the lower right corner at our cursor the small red point because we have enabled auto constraining in the preferences so we will have the same center as this circle here okay so we draw another circle here we draw another circle here and here we do a right click we select all circles and we apply equality and a radius so I choose yes and the radius is 2 millimeters okay we close our sketch we do our padding of 4 millimeters and this is what we have done now so the next operation will be to have the cutouts made here for these two front connectors on the Arduino board since uh, the cutouts are halfly related to the lower part and halfly related to the upper part uh, we need to have the upper part be updated when we change the dimension or position of the cutouts in the lower part so this time we will use a different workflow we will first apply a sketch to the XZ plane using an offset of minus 37 millimeters. So we will create our two rectangles for the cutouts. We will close the sketch to be sure that we achieved a small offset from this face here to get an independent solid because the next operation will be to use a pad operation and then to apply a boolean cut and when we are doing the upper part of the casing we will clone this pad so if we do uh, alter the sketch of these cutouts here the clone will adapt and also the cut in the upper part of the case. So I now do a right click on this pad here. I toggle the visibility in order to uh, have more comfortability uh, for editing the sketch here. So I will do a right click here. I will choose my filleting tool again. I will apply fillet here. And here on all those four corners I do a right click I select all these four arcs again and I will apply a radius of one millimeter to all of them so the next thing is to make um, the positioning so I will apply a horizontal constraint of uh, I did measure in the 3D step model 5,39 millimeters. So I want to have an offset here of 0, 0,5 millimeters. So my dimension should be 4,89 millimeters. Okay. So I am applying here a dimension of uh, what I did measure was 17,39 millimeters. So with offset, we have 17,89 millimeters. So now we want to define the Z component. So as you can remember, we have our ground floor at zero. We did the padding of 4 mm and then we have the Arduino board with a thickness of 2 mm. 
we want to have an offset of 0 0,5 millimeters. So this is 4 plus 2 minus 0 0,5 millimeters. So we end up with 5,5 millimeters of vertical distance for this point here. Now we are able to apply a vertical distance to these two points. So I did measure the 3D model and it showed an 8 of a connector of 11 millimeters. So with offset of 0 0,5 millimeters to both sides, we will end up with 12 millimeters complete 8 of the cutout. So the next thing is that we will constrain here, being with a, z a 0 0,5 millimeter cutout, 13,30 three millimeters. Now we will apply a horizontal dimension here of twenty two comma thirty three no uh, I did measure twenty two comma eight three so I have to apply positively the offset so we will end up with twenty three comma 33 millimeters. Okay. Now I will apply also 12 millimeters here because I also did measure 11 millimeter plus offset of 0 0,5 millimeters two times. This ends up 12 millimeters. So now I am applying here a vertical distance of also 5,5 millimeters. I do close the sketch. I do my pad operation of 3 millimeters. I toggle the visibility of this pad and I see, oh, we used the wrong di uh, direction of a pad. No problem. We do right click on this pad and we will choose Edit Pad and we will choose Reversed and here we go. So now we can select uh, this pad here and then we will also select this pad here. Make sure to keep this order because the second selected object is being cut away from a first selected object. So we will switch to the part workbench and we will do our boolean cut. So the only thing which remains is the fillet here on this edge. So I just select this face here, go back to part design, choose the fillet tool, apply 0 0.6 millimeter fillet choose OK and we are set with a basic uh, part so, uh, so uh, this is the lower half of the casing. So at this moment let's challenge fade a little bit and let's choose File, Merge Project and let's do a merge with the Arduino board. And here we have the correct positions of all pins. Everything looks nice. One thing is not corrected yet. It is the Z position of the board. Because at the moment our origin is in the middle of the bottom face of the board itself. But it should be at 4 mm 8. So in this case we would have to apply to all of these components of the board an incremental change in placement in Z direction of plus 4 millimeters and then everything would be fine. So phew, we did have some luck. I'm going to delete all those elements and we 
can continue with uh, the upper part of our case. So for doing the upper part of our case we want to reuse the sketch we did use on this lower part. So I'm selecting the sketch, I'm changing to the draft workbench and doing a draft clone of the sketch. So as you can see we cannot only clone 3D elements we can also clone 2D elements. So I'm selecting the clone and do a, apply an incremental or an absolute change in this case uh, it's the same of 22 millimeters. This is the 8, the inner 8 of the case. So we click on OK and the next thing is that we change to the part design workbench. We make sure this clone is selected. We do our pad operation. We choose two dimensions. So the first dimension is 1,6 millimeter. Of course, what I could do is link to a 1,6 millimeter in the first pad used here. I won't do this in this model, but you could also do this and we'll make my model even more parametric. So if you change the wall thickness in the lower part, the wall thickness in the upper part would, would also change. The second length we choose to be 11 millimeters. We click on OK. And here we are with the basic outline of our upper part of our case. OK, so now we toggle the visibility of this solid here. We choose this face here. We change, uh, we switch to the part workbench and apply a thickness of minus 1,6 millimeter again. We choose OK and here we are. Now as you can see I have at the moment no possibility to link the thickness used here to the thickness used here. I also do not have at the moment the possibility within FreeCAD to project edges or dimensions from different solids or different sketches on different planes uh, within the model. I only have the possibility as shown uh, previously in this video to link within a sketch um, to external edge but this sketch st should belong to the same solid and it uh, should be lying just uh, under the sketch I am currently working on. And I have the ability to do reference with using expressions as shown previously. So when now doing um, a sketch for the pins, I only have a possibility to select this face, switch to part design, apply a sketch to this face here, and we will draw two circles roughly at the correct position and making sure we are auto constraining that they share the same center. Okay, so now we do a right click, we select all the inner circles and apply a radius of 1,6 mm to them. So the next thing is to select oops, to select all the outer circles and apply a radius of 2,1 mm. Okay. So we switch to construction mode. 
we draw now a vertical line. We do right click to end the command and as you can see in reference to this point this was our first circle and then counterclockwise we named the rest. Okay. So within this sketch I will now choose the origin here we will choose the origin this point and we will have a dimension and I will link to sketch constraints x divided by 2 here we go and I will choose this point again and here the origin and apply here a link to sketch constraints y divided by 2. So I do not need to fully constrain the sketch but at the moment FreeCAD does take into account that also construction geometry within a sketch should be constrained in order to be uh, fully constrained within the sketch. So I'm choosing here a vertical uh, dimensional constraint and I will link to sketch constraints y. Here we go. So the next thing will be to constrain the position of our uh, of our circles here. We will link to sketch. Oops. Once more, sketch constraints x1. Okay. And here we go with these two points linking to sketch constraints y1. Okay. So as we went counterclockwise we should now link this point to sketch constraints x2 and we should link this point once more to sketch constraints y2. Okay. So we will repeat the action here. Linking to sketch constraints x3 and here linking to const uh, sketch constraints y3. Okay. Now we do the constraining for our last point and if I'm not mistaken where is missing one core incidence constraint so we will now link to sketch constraints x4 and we will link one last time to sketch constraints y4 okay and here we go the sketch is complete we can close and uh,
I will have to check again now um, about the padding distance here. So the check of uh, the 3D model used in uh, the reference video turned out that the padding has to be done with 10 millimeters length. So the next thing is that we want to have our cutouts for these front connectors. So as I said, we will uh, make a clone. Let's I just toggle the visibility via uh, the space bar to be sure that I'm doing clones of the correct pad. So toggle the visibility back again. Going to draft and making clones. If I wouldn't be recording a video, I would maybe using keyboard shortcuts for all these to speed up uh, modeling. So now we will use uh, select pet 005 and the clone, and we will switch to part workbench. We will use the cut command, and here we are. We just need to apply those cutouts on the top face and the radius here, and we are all set. So as for those cutouts for these two electrical pins, or they are in fact four electrical pins to be reachable, we'll select this face. We go back to Part Design Workbench, and uh, well, here we are, and we apply a sketch to the face, and uh, we will toggle Construction Mode off, and we will create our two rectangles. We do a right click, we toggle to Construction Mode, and we will draw a line. And by applying a horizontal constraint to that line, we make sure that these two lines are collinear. So the next thing is we will toggle to uh, normal mode again, and uh, we will apply vertical uh, dimensional constraint of 22,3 because we want to have an offset of 0, 0,5 millimeter here as well. So this is the same with this point here, 22,3. Okay, so now here these pins are 2.454, so uh, we want to apply an offset of 0, 0,5 millimeters, so we have to enter 3,54. Okay, we repeat this action here as well. Now we will here apply a constraint of 30,5 millimeters and we will apply a length in vertical distance of 32,6 millimeters to here and I just forgot to add the offset here and here, so we will have 31 millimeters here, and we will have 33,6 millimeters here. So 
we will have a length here of 42,1 plus 1. So this is 2 times the offset. And here we are. We will close our sketch. And here we made the two necessary cutouts. And let's see. Um, I just clicked on OK uh, without looking very closely. At the moment we have a length of 5 mm, but I want to have the option to first. So if I ever will uh, change the thickness here, uh, the depth of the pocket will adapt. So we click on OK, and these are the two cutouts made here. So now for the rest of the cutouts, we will edit the sketch once more, and uh, with a 0 0.16 stable release, um, there was something introduced called driven constraints in the sketcher. So when I click uh, here on this line uh, to select it, for example, you are able to not only have dimensional constraints directly controlling the line, uh, for example, giving horizontal or vertical dimension or whatever, you also can switch to now we have the color blue to driven constraints to just indicate in this case the length of the line. As you can see on Windows, I have no chance with double clicking uh, the dimension. And if I look at the dimension here, here it turns blue. And doing a double click in this list here will bring up a grayed out input field here, so it is not changeable. I only can uh, use a name, and of course I can use expressions to do uh, a reference to this driven constraint here. So now we have to fill in this gap here with some slots. So. Um, I've already did some math uh, to have uh, a distance bet uh, in between the slots of um, as um, near to the uh, dimension here of the slots. So uh, we will have uh, six slots here. So I'm just putting up here six rectangles. I'm doing a right click and I'm using construction mode and I will use some lines from this point to this. Oops. Just realize that these lines aren't construction lines, so we have to change that. Let's select these lines. Here we are, and move them to construction mode. Now let's continue in construction mode and have here a line going horizontally to this line and have also a constraint attached uh, point on object. So we repeat the action right here, do a right click. Now when looking here, these two lines have to receive horizontal uh, constraining. So the next thing is 
but we want to apply equality to all of them here and we want to apply equality to all of these lines and to one of these lines here. So here we go. The next thing is to set up a driving distance here of two millimeters. Otherwise I would collide with uh, the retaining pin which I did as pet here. So the next thing is that we will draw a construction line from this point to this point and we will do a right click and we will select this point and this construction line and apply fixed point onto an object as constraint. We will repeat here. We will repeat here. We will repeat here. Once more. And hopefully the last one. Here we are. Our sketch turns green. Everything done. We click on close. And as you can see here, we didn't collide. So this looks like a good design for the two, for three, uh, 3D printing. So the only thing left to do is to pl apply our fillet here. If I would select the whole face, the fillet would be also applied to these edges. I do not want to happen that, so I'm going to select all the edges here. Oops. So after selecting all the edges, I apply a fillet with a radius of 0, 0,6 millimeter. I click on OK. I will toggle the visibility of my reference sketch, and I will toggle the visibility this solid here and this is our completed sketch uh, our completed scale so one last time we can do file merge project now we can apply a placement to all this incremental in that direction of 4 mm. OK. And here we are. It looks like the cutouts went well and everything seems to be OK. So, of course, you could also have opened the Arduino Uno board as a separate file. and uh, then select all the solids of a board and then you switch to part workbench choose part make compound and then of course you could also make a simple copy and copy that to the clipboard and insert it here. So you would just get a solid uh, which is, well you could call it dump, it has no history and uh, you cannot change dimensions afterwards. Of course you can uh, add pockets or pads or things like that but um, you cannot change the history and so uh, the already used dimensions of a solid. So with this being said we have reached the end of this video. I hope you, you had fun in watching it 
and uh, I could uh, show some new features and some good things and um, I will leave uh, a file in the forum and uh, I will leave a link to the thread uh, of uh, discussion with a video description on YouTube and uh, well have fun with FreeCAD and maybe see you in another video. Bye!